Welcome to the newest installment of the Untitled Film Nerd Project. My name is Philip, and joining me as always is Teacher. Hello. And for this episode, we watched Into the Dark, Season 1, Episode 4, New Year, New You. Before we get into it, spoiler warning now! If you want to avoid spoilers, skip ahead to the time code you see on the screen. So, let's get into the cast and crew rundown. I'm throwing up another time code right now. If you want to skip over the rundown of cast and crew, skip ahead to this time code. Other than that, let's get started. This was directed by Sophia Takal. Uh, she's an actress turned director. And the only thing I recognized that she was in was the VHS segment Second Honeymoon. Mm -hmm. So there's that. This was written by Adam Gaines and Sophia Takal. On to the cast. Alexis is Suki Waterhouse. She's in a movie that I vaguely recall you mentioned you wanted to see called Assassination Nation. Yes. Yes. Also in Ab Fab the Movie, Pride and Prejudice and Zombies, etc. Danielle was Carly Chaikin. She is most well known for uh, the TV series Mr. Robot as Darlene. Kayla was Kirby Howell Baptiste. I don't recognize her from anything, but she's been in a few TV series such as Love, Barry. Upcoming, she has Veronica Mars. I don't know if that's a reboot or a continuation of the old one. I'm not sure. Hmm. It says pre-production, so I don't know exactly what's going on there. Uh, Chloe was Melissa Berglund. She's most well-known for the TV show Winners and Losers as Jenny Gross. Some peripheral cast. Frankie was Michelle Hero. She is most well-known for The Coroner, I Speak for the Dead as Michelle. And she's also in a movie that I'm just saying because I love the title of it so much called Izzy Gets the Fuck Across Town. Ah, uh, yes. Such an awesome title for a movie. Yeah. Another minor character, Jesse Hall, was Bianca Lopez. She's done lots of one-off TV shows. Carly, the girl who was jumping up and down, was Mia Ella Clyburn. She has been in Gifted as Jasmine, but only has five acting credits so far. And apparently Kelsey was there somewhere. She is Isabella Akers. She does a lot of voice work. Like, she was in Phineas and Herb as Katie. Adventure Time as Young Princess Bubblegum. Hmm. She's also done Wreck-It Ralph, Ice Age, A Mammoth Christmas, and lots of other TV and voiceover work as well. And that's pretty much the entire cast and crew. So <laughs> I, okay. I, I, I usually ask, is there anybody else? I don't think there literally is anybody else. No. <laughs> I think it would absolutely everybody. <laughs> All right. So let's get into our initial thoughts. I was on board with this until like the last 10 minutes, personally. Mm -hmm. I was digging it. Kind of had that little uh, left turn it made. 30 uh, minutes in, uh, I was digging that. There was a few different movies rolled into one. It went from like, you know, old uh, reunion movie to a captive movie to kind of torture movie to a cat and mouse game movie. It was only an hour and like 24, 25 minutes, including mm -hmm. credits, including credits. You could have done five more minutes and made your ending a little better, I thought. But that's, I mean, that's me. For an actress turned director, not bad. Mm-hmm. You know, if you if you can't cross the finish line as strongly as you started running the race, I'm, you know, eh. It was so-so. Yeah. This was an extremely odd movie mm -hmm. to me. Right. Like, I, I, w I was enjoying some aspects, wasn't enjoying other aspects. One of the things that I find the oddest about, to, about it is it seemed like it was almost referencing 90s made-for-tv thriller movies. Even the credits. Yeah, yeah. Like even the font yeah, yeah, used yeah. at the beginning, like how they showed uh, Bloomhouse Productions, mm -hmm. that looked just like something I'd see on, like, you know, USA yep, Network or yep, something. Yep. Uh, the music playing in the background mm -hmm. also seemed very reminiscent of that. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll reference some of that later. Okay. Let's breakdowns sure what was your favorite scene so i have two here um first one was kayla kicking chloe just because that was such an awesome knee-jerk reaction and it seemed so genuine of a reaction right and then the other thing i liked was just how evil danielle was that that girl was like a sociopath how manipulative that she was and showing absolutely no no emotion whatsoever mm -hmm. even when she was in danger mm -hmm. and she was tied up mm -hmm. she still had that smile on yeah yeah her facade. and she was still pushing that manipulation mm -hmm. 
and yeah, like I have to give kudos to the actress on that. Mm, definitely, yeah. But yeah, that's mostly what all mine was. Uh, what were yours? Well, I'm going to speak to yours for a second. I think a case could be made for Alexis also being a fucking psychopath. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll get to that more in Mediocre, though. But I just want to say that there's there's some issues I have with painting Danielle in that light. But we'll get to that mm. in a bit. Um, I think my favorite scene, as you referenced, was the entire uh, Danielle being tied up. Mm-hmm. I just, I loved how she was just almost like smug. Mm-hmm. She was always in control. And just the way she manipulated Chloe. Mm-hmm. It was just a master class for her in just how good she is. Yeah. And just the way she took what happened with Kelsey and just like spun it. Mm-hmm. And to, you know, there's nothing I could do and I have to live with that. I didn't do anything to stop it. I'm like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like you. <laughs> yeah. I shouldn't, but I kind of do. But other than that, I did nothing really stuck out. That's probably the most, the coolest thing that happened in the movie to me. So, yeah. Yeah. What was your holy shit moment? So I referenced it earlier, but again, I have to go with um, Kayla kicking Chloe because okay. I was not expecting that. Mm-hmm. And then even Chloe's death how Danielle just shoved her right in the way of being hit by the golf club. Yeah, yeah. To Danielle is just another mm-hmm. solution. Oh, yeah. Again, something else that she turned to her advantage. Mm-hmm. So, but where were yours? Well, I have a few, like, varying ones. None, 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 some of them aren't like, oh, my God. They were just like, whoa. Mm-hmm. One of them was when they were playing Never Have I Ever. Mm-hmm. Uh, when Alexis says to her, Never have I ever bullied a poor innocent girl until she committed suicide. I was like, whoa. Mm-hmm. This movie just went dark. Dark? Yeah, quick. It got my attention. In that same scene, when Alexa says, get the balloons, tie her up. You agreed to do this. I was like, oh, shit. Mm-hmm. This is a kidnappy movie <laughs> now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's not what I thought it was going to be when the opening scene happened. Mm-hmm. I thought it was going to be a little more uh, supernatural, I guess. Yeah. Like, I thought Girl in Pool was going to be undead or something and come back to life during the new year or something. Mm-hmm. That's, where, that's where my mind ran with it. There was a point where Danielle was manipulating Chloe. And I wrote first, I was like, if I were Danielle, I would just left. But that would have been me. That was like the easy solution. Just leave. Go back to fucking mm-hmm. Hollywood or wherever. But she just nonchalantly tells Chloe, we'd call the cops and tell them they were dead when we found them. And Chloe's like, uh, what? Oh, shit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you, are, you actually are kind of fucked in the head mm-hmm. so it's holy shit ish i'm gonna save that because i had a holy shit slash mediocre moment at the same time but i'm gonna save that for mediocre because it's more mediocre to me mm-hmm. when chloe is just like visibly shaken because she you know accidentally killed kayla and she tells danielle i killed kayla and danielle says i am so proud of you <laughs> <laughs> you're putting yourself first mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, biggest holy shit moment to me was uh, Chloe stabbing Frankie. Yeah. You are full on manipulated. Holy crap. You know, mm-hmm. you know, Danielle's going to dispose of you when you're fucking done. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. And that was about it for my holy shit moments. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's compare notes on this one. What were your mediocre moment? To... So the most glaring one mm-hmm. is the ending. Yep. That little YouTube segment that they did i'm just like first of all did no one do forensics mm-hmm. and yeah it was just like i don't understand how you could have turned any of that around to where it was frankie's fault exactly i could understand if you could turn it around to where it was chloe's fault since it was pretty much chloe that did all the killing mm-hmm. and danielle didn't danielle purposely did not do any of it right yep and yeah, and, and it just seems so tacked on and forced. Again, another one. I think this is by choice, but I didn't like it. The music. Oh, okay. I, I didn't like the first time when I heard it in the 90s. I don't like it now. <laughs> and then flashbacks. Mm-hmm. Like the little flashbacks to the girl that had committed suicide. The, mm-hmm. Just that blurry vision thing. I hated that. A long time ago, again, something else from the 90s that I didn't like, and I'm so glad that it got better in modern day with flashbacks, and to see it thrown back into my face, I'm like, ugh. Yeah, yeah. 
those are my biggest ones. I mean, there's still a lot here and there, but mostly those. What were yours? Uh, in addition to the tacked on ending, I hated the way that Daniel died. That was fucking annoying to me. Mm-hmm. It was like, I control my destiny while shaking Danielle. And I was just like, ah, ah. I'm like, fight back. Mm-hmm. You are just fighting. You can't just, I'm going to stand here and be shaken now. And then the badly throw her through the window CGI thing. And then she lands in the water clean as a whistle. Mm-hmm. Why the fuck is there blood everywhere? Mm-hmm. I mean, I was watching with a friend and he said maybe she cut herself on the glass, which I will concede that maybe. Mm-hmm. But still... She didn't hit the edge of the pool at all that I saw. And it's not like it was that far. And it wasn't that shallow. Yeah. So I didn't like that. The tacked on ending with Alexis taking Daniel's spot, that bothered me less than how Mm -hmm. Daniel died, which is the major mediocre moment to me. That was ridiculous. I've said it before. It's like making a wedding cake. And the last thing you do to it is just take a dump on it. People got to stop doing that to their movies. The ending can Mm -hmm. make or break your movie. And not only did you make it like you made an ending times two that we individually did not like you hated the tacked on ending with alexis i hated the fucking way danielle died it's like a one-two punch like Mm -hmm. fuck this movie boom boom (laughs) and uh it's irritating it wasn't the best thing but it was you know i wasn't minding it yeah i was enjoying it more than flesh and blood personally yeah i was about to say that it was better than thanksgiving's episode (laughs) so uh this is me nitpicking but the uh, like fakey looking CGI steam, mm-hmm. uh, I get it. Like I get it. Again, if this was a '90s, you know, nod to the '90s, like you were saying, a lot of this I forgive because of that. The music did not bother me at all because of that. Mm-hmm. And I haven't seen it since the fucking '90s, so <laughs> I think it's easier to digest now. <laughs> okay, my holy shit slash mediocre moment that veers to the mediocre side more is you referenced earlier Chloe killing Kayla with her head smacking the sink. Mm-hmm. It looked like it would have just given her a mild headache. Yeah. Not kill her. Yeah. I didn't uh-huh. like that. Like some of the death scene, like Frankie's death scene, awesome. Uh, Chloe's death scene, not bad. But Kayla's death scene was weak. Mm-hmm. And Danielle's was super weak. So yeah, I didn't like that. I said that this movie is doing kind of a poor job of painting Danielle as the evil antagonist and Alexis as the uh, valiant protagonist when it's actually all Alexis's fault. Mm -hmm. Are they trying to tell me that if they hadn't tied her up, she was going to kill them anyway? No. She probably would have had some champagne, slept it off, went back to her rich life, and that's that. Mm -hmm. Everything that happened is Alexis. I think Alexis is the actual villain of the movie. Danielle was fighting back. She's a psychopath. Yeah. It was her defense mechanism. Mm-hmm. And, okay, yeah, she may have bullied Kelsey and Chloe and Kayla and all of them in high school. I was bullied mercifully in high school. And I've had people make amends with me. I, I don't talk to any of them, but I was like, thank you. Mm-hmm. But I'm not going to tie you a fucking chair. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so I just thought that they did a really bad job of making Danielle the, the, the villain and mm-hmm. Alexis the hero, when I think it's actually the opposite. Well, and it's like how Kayla had told her in the steam room. It's like... If you don't want to see her, just don't go down on Instagram. Yeah, exactly. You know, she's like, you manipulated, like, you, Alexis, (laughs) ma'am, manipulated these other two Mm -hmm. uh, women into doing your bidding. So who's the psychopath here? And then I got vindicated at the end when she took her spot. Mm -hmm. It's like, you are. You are. And Alexis was just, she was not right in the head from the get-go. Oh, yeah. Yeah, her jealousy and resentment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I love the scene when they're, they're they're doing that dance together, and she's just like not into it, and Daniel's just giving her this evil look, mm-hmm. like bitch, you better dance. This it was all Alexis's fault, and they're dead because of Alexis, and she gets the spoils because she knew she would. Mm-hmm. But I did, that just fell flat for me. It didn't make me hate the movie. It just I don't think the characters were written correctly. It's just like the two people I feel most sorry for were the lesbians. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so, eh, yeah. Anyone that's seen this, you, you, you know, I said I haven't said it in a while. But fight me, internet, because I will stand my ground on this one. Alexis is the villain mm-hmm. of this movie. Danielle is just defending herself the only way she knew how. If you back a like a wild animal into a corner, it's gonna fight back. Mm-hmm. They tied her the fuck up. She cut her hair. She smeared bullshit all over her face. She threatened her with a piece of glass. She had every right to use all of her manipulation to fight back to get out of that situation. 
-hmm. So that's where I'll leave it at that. Yeah, then you referenced it, the whole uh, Alexis pinning it all on Frankie, making no sense, and then taking Daniel's spot. I, th I think it was kind of amusing where then Alexis was doing the, the self-defense segment mm -hmm. that Danielle referenced she was going to do. Those are what I had written down in my uh, notes as mediocre that I labeled mediocre, but there might be more during the notes. Yeah. All right, if any, LOL moment. There wasn't much for me. Uh, I guess some of it would have been Chloe's story about the threesome. Okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah you know, just the entire nodding thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> what else does nodding mean? Hello? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're naked. <laughs> yeah, that was good. Yeah, that, that's kind of it for me on that. You? I like the part in the beginning where they're getting out of the car. Why do you only have one umbrella? And she's like, who has two umbrellas? Mary Poppins. I don't fucking know. <laughs> and she goes, see, this is why we don't buy $5,000 boots. <laughs> I think Danielle's probably my favorite character, just how she portrayed her character. As we've said mm -hmm. a few times, she just did it really well. Just how nonchalant she said she had the alibi she had for Frankie to bring her in the house and then, you know, Etc. Cetera, et cetera. was a jealous lover. Yeah, and she says it's kind of an amazing story because then I can do a whole segment on self-defense. I was like, damn, that's awesome. Chloe's delivery was good, so she was the bulk of the LOL. Yes. But um, yeah. Other than that, that's all I got. All right, those are all for our breakdowns. Anything else you'd like to add in this realm, or you want to go to my notes? Notes is fine. Phillips notes. I wrote that Danielle's makeup in the beginning was horrible. Mm -hmm. She looked like she had not slept in days. Uh, we got a not-so-subtle golf club foreshadowing. We got a not-so-subtle kitchen knives foreshadowing. Mm -hmm. I appreciated that they did not cast four skinny white women. Personally, I like when there's diversity in the cast. Yes. So, you know, we had a couple of white women. We also had an African-American. We had uh, an overweight woman. We mm -hmm. had, you know, the gay population represented. But not in a, like, look how gay she is. She's so gay. <laughs> like, she's just like, you know, I have a girlfriend. I like the diversity of the cast, and I like when they do that. Because mm -hmm. in the 90s, this would have been four skinny-ass white women. Oh, yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, just saying. Uh, there was a quote that I believe it was Alexis said that resonated with me personally on in a very real way. This isn't me trying to be sarcastic at all. When they're talking about themselves, and she says, I have a lot of regrets feeling like I didn't live my best life, which pretty much defines my entire existence. And if I could go back and do it again, I certainly fucking would. Mm -hmm. So that, that resonated with me when uh, Daniel was talking about Mr. Electric Car and Alexis says, he just seems so smart. I was like, ooh, <laughs> damn, girl. Like, what's wrong with you? You just settle down. I think they're talking about Le uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. Daniel says, he likes my juices. I bet he does. <laughs> it was an, I forgot to write right now, a little beside that. That was funny, too. I wrote that this is a game of who's the real psychopath. Mm-hmm. I like that the tables were turned and they locked them in the sauna. Uh, then Alexa says, she's not going to let us out of here. She's fucking insane. I wrote, um, uh, <laughs> uh, pot, meat, kettle. Mm -hmm. You know, come on. Didn't like when they ran upstairs to hide. I just thought, just stand guard at the bottom of the stairs. The house is hermetically sealed. They can't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. So just stand guard down there. Hide behind a fucking lamp. Take curtains. your chances at trying to overpower them. You're in a house with lots of objects you could use to fight back with. I'm talking about the bad people. Or no, the so-called bad people. Danielle oh, and okay. Chloe. Because mm -hmm. Kayla and Alexis went upstairs. Well, just wait at the bottom of the stairs then. Yeah. Kill all the power, break some fucking vases, and then sprinkle them all over the steps. Mm-hmm. You'll know they're coming downstairs then. I did like when it was like the cat and mouse game. Frankie was already in the house talking to Danielle, which is working her charm honor and chloe says you know i'll be right back because alexis wants to go and grab the knife it's on like the stand and when uh chloe grabs the knife alexis goes fuck like she makes like the fuck face like she was she's just, just like fuck and then she goes back and grabs the key she's like fuck <laughs> so i thought that was kind of amusing mm -hmm. everything else i talked about those are for my notes okay anything else you'd like to add you want to go to final thoughts final thoughts is fine i think for a love letter to the 90s it wasn't bad but it could have been a lot better, even as a love letter to the 90s. Yep. Uh, the plot kind of fell apart towards the end to me. I thought that they didn't write their characters as strong as they could have with Danielle and uh, Alexis. Certainly not the best effort from Into the Dark. Still better than the Thanksgiving one, as we said. And at least it involved New Year somehow. Mm -hmm. As the like the thing that was wrapped around. It wasn't just in the background. I mean, if you want to watch the Into the Dark series, if you're watching it like we are, check it out, of course. If you're not, uh, you could probably skip this. 
Mm-hmm. I don't think it's really necessary to watch. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to echo a lot of those sentiments. Like I can recommend this to some people, but I also know a lot of people that probably would not like it. I mean, it was still entertaining ish, but this one's going to go low on the rating as far as all the episodes that we've seen so far. Oh yeah. Which will, we're going to do that when we're like 12 to one, one year from now. Yeah. We're on episode four. <laughs> so <laughs> eight more to go and we'll do our, like a list or something of our like 12 to one or whatever of that. That takes care of final thoughts. But before we go, as it pertains to new year, new you, what did we learn? I learned 2018 really sucked for Frankie. Right? Oh, <laughs> poor Frankie. She's just coming to try and rescue her girlfriend. Mm hmm. I learned that I, I would probably really get along with Danielle. Mm-hmm. She'd be like, this is all natural and cruelty free. I'm like, girl, yes. <laughs> Give me some of that. I don't want to purple green bullshit. I'll rub that on my face. Cruelty free. I'm all there, honey. I look like the Joker. Yeah, she was. Yeah, I got that. I got that vibe, too. Well, that wraps up this episode. Thank you for listening. If you've seen New Year, New You, tell us what you thought of the movie in the comments below. If you like the video, please hit the like button, share it with your friends or cool people who might dig the Fizzcast, and please subscribe to the channel, including hitting that notification bell to stay up to date on the newest content. Speaking of, for our next video, we'll be watching the 2018 remake of Suspiria. One that we are both very excited to see. So until then, once again, my name is Philip. And I'm TJ. And we'll return next time to talk about Suspiria. Goodbye. Bye.